How does the incentive auction work? First, a reverse auction determines how much it will cost to repurpose a given amount of spectrum previously licensed to television stations. TV stations are offered money to vacate their spectrum. Stations that do not sell are guaranteed a channel in their current frequency band. The reverse auction starts with high prices offered to TV stations. If more stations accept these prices than needed to clear the specified amount of spectrum, prices decrease. As prices drop, some stations will reject the prices offered and join the set of stations that will remain on the air. If no spectrum is available for a station, the price offered to the station stops decreasing. The auction continues until there is no spectrum left for any of the stations accepting the prices. This establishes the amount of money needed to clear the spectrum. Next, the same amount of spectrum is offered in a forward auction to wireless carriers. In the forward auction, prices start low and rise until the amount of spectrum for which there are bids equals the available supply. If the amount bid by wireless providers is not enough to pay the broadcasters, then the auction continues to a new stage, in which both the reverse and forward auctions are repeated starting where they left off. In each succeeding stage, the FCC designates a smaller amount of spectrum to be sold to wireless carriers, and therefore needs to buy fewer channels from TV stations. Because this frees up more space for TV stations, competition among TV broadcasters makes their prices go down. And then in the forward auction, less wireless spectrum for sale means more competition among wireless bidders, which increases the price of the spectrum. The incentive auction continues through as many stages as are necessary for money bid by wireless providers to pay the selling TV broadcasters. At that point, supply and demand are in balance and the auction ends.